Hey friends, welcome back for another room makeover. Today we are working in the dining room. Well, not just today. This has been a long, on, long going process. Long ongoing process? Already starting to stumble over my words. <laughs> not a good sign at the beginning of the video. But uh, if you're new here, I am Allison. My husband and I recently just bought a house built in 1965 that really has not been updated since then. And we are pouring lots of love, TLC, and DIYs and uh, making it our own space. So I recently shared a living room makeover. And at the same time that we were working on that room, we were also redoing this little dining nook. It is very cute. It's right off of our kitchen. It's very dated. So uh, I'm starting with taking off the curtains and we're going to get started on paint. You may notice some carpets that are down on the ground. Those have been there a long time. They are very stained and we are going to leave those there until we finish painting because we want to use those as a drop cloth. Be resourceful. Work smarter, not harder. During this painting process, I didn't have to worry about paint splatters or anything because I knew that all of this flooring was being torn out. So that was a nice little perk of this project. Also, you'll see my husband Christian pop in and out of this video. He is always behind the scenes doing everything that makes these videos possible. I do a lot of the painting and the finishing work, but he is the one who is an electrician, a plumber, a builder. He is all of those things in one, and so he is the mastermind behind all of this work. So props to Christian. You'll see him pop in and out. And now that we have this giant curtain fixture taken down and the holes patched, I'm going to start picking up in this room and getting it ready to paint. You can see we have lovely, lovely wood paneling on the bottom half of this wall. I knew going into this room that I wanted to use that paneling to my advantage, not have to worry about removing it and making the uh, drywall totally smooth again. So I'm going to be painting the top half of the room Swiss Coffee by Bear, the same color I've been using all over our house. I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I'm using it in a flat finish on the walls, but I am going to hold off on painting the lower half of the trim. You'll see later on we have a bit of a color debate going on in this room, so you'll have to stay tuned to let me know if I chose the right color for this room. I talked about this a bit in my last room makeover, but one of my favorite things we're doing in this house is not using a different shade of white for all of the trim. There's crown molding, there's baseboards, there's this like half wall trim piece, and we are using the same exact paint color, the same Swiss coffee, but we are doing a slightly different finish of paint. So there's still a little bit of contrast and distinction between the two, but there's something super seamless and classy and just, it looks so fresh and crisp and clean about having the crown molding match the wall color and so I am a big fan of this like I said before we're using the flat interior paint on the walls and then I'm going in with an eggshell finish on the crown molding I know going with a glossier paint makes it easier to clean and so a flat interior paint and the eggshell finish would not be the ideal combo for most people with young kids and dogs but it looks so much better and also living in this house with the original paint in it all of it was high gloss like not semi gloss like the highest gloss possible and yes that's much easier to wipe down and clean but it was still filthy all over the house like the grime and the buildup was just a lot to handle and it's just so shiny everywhere that I am very happy with every single inch of this house that I am painting a little bit more matte so come at me if you're not a fan of flat paint on all of the interior walls we have a dog we've got babies I'm pregnant and expecting another one like bring on the messes bring on the paint touch-ups I really couldn't care less in this house same mistake You'll also catch me vacuuming a lot during this process. One, because we're living in this space and it just takes time to do this DIY work with a toddler being here full time also. 
but this house was built before lead paint was eradicated from homes. Um, we're pretty sure that there's lead paint in this house and so we just take as many precautions as possible. Whenever we drill into a wall or create dust, we just want to make sure we're cleaning up any possible paint chips or anything floating around in the air. Um, if anything was happening more serious, like when we get to actual like wall removal and remodeling stuff, we definitely will be using like much more protection against the lead paint. Like we will be tarping areas, venting it and all of that stuff. But for just patching the walls and sanding them a little bit, we feel comfortable with just vacuuming up afterwards. When I begin to get myself together again we're still waiting on our extended curtain rods to come in the mail, so Christian hung up the brackets, and now moving on to the paint debate. I really wanted to go a little bit bolder and moody with the darker color, but a lot of you guys messaged me and said go with the more neutral, the lighter color. You don't know what this house is going to look like, especially when we reveal the hardwoods, and a lot of you said just go safe for now, be bold a little bit later, and I was thankful for that advice. So we finally settled on a lower color for this wall. It's actually kind of funny watching these clips back because it seems hardly a different color than the beige painted everywhere before, but it's better. It's a little bit more trendy. It's a fun taupe color. It's called Creamy Mushroom by Bear. So I got a quart of this and I went for a shinier finish. What did I do this in? I don't think it was satin. So it must've been an eggshell finish for this. And so I'm just gonna go through and paint all of this wood paneling. One of you left a comment like yesterday that had a very good point that I probably Probably should have primed all of this wood paneling before I painted it. Um, the paint that I'm using is like a paint primer combo, but you recommended doing the primer because of the tannins in the wood. Basically it's things that will leach through the wood and like start showing up streaking through the paint. That is a very good point, so if any of you are looking to paint your uh, wood paneling, we haven't had any problems yet or seen anything like that, but I would definitely recommend uh, using a primer. I wish I had gone back in time and done that, but we'll survive, we're not gonna die, and if I have to do some paint touch-ups in the future, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I'm going in and cutting in all of the edging, the baseboards, and then using a brush to get into all of the grooves in the wood paneling. Um, I'm not gonna touch the baseboards quite yet. Um, we have this carpet up, like I've mentioned before, and about a half inch or so of the baseboards are hidden by the carpet and the carpet padding and all of that stuff, so I'm gonna wait till we rip these floors out. You'll see what's waiting underneath them. It's very exciting, but uh, once we rip them out, I'll go back and finish the paint job with all of the baseboards. Have you ever been in love? Have you ever lost your head? Have you felt like you were out of breath when you saw her in that dress? When your heart is beating fast and you're sweating, you can't stop looking at her smile. Then you've been in love. That's how you know you've been in love. Something we did in the living room that made a huge change was caulking all of the crown molding. Pretty sure this was put in and installed when the house was built. So of course, time passes, things settle, a little bit of cracking happens, and just sealing this with some interior caulk looks so professional and so seamless. Also, so sorry about the like flashing lights. I had the fan going and it was like chopping the light. So very, very sorry about the uh, headache you're getting from this clip. But it is so satisfying to see this like crack in the ceiling completely disappear and this crown molding looks so crispy and fresh and clean. It just makes me so excited to see all of this done. And uh, 
surprisingly even more exciting than caulking the crown molding is removing these carpets. We have been waiting to do this. Finally, most of the paint is taken care of, and so Christian's going to go ahead and be superhero dad in this video again and cut all this up, roll it up. Um, he is not like in the trade of like doing any construction work. Like he has zero experience doing all of this stuff. We don't have this like we're just figuring it all out as we go along the way. So we watch tons of YouTube videos, how tos, Google what to do, and just hope for the best when we do these projects. And Christian is really good at this stuff. So I don't have a lot of advice when it comes to these DIY projects besides Googling like professional like builders and contractors. You will find electrician YouTube channels, plumbing YouTube channels, all kinds of things. And those are resources we use all the time. Look at these floors. I can't believe they have been covered up with carpet for so long, but also the carpet's kind of been preserving them. One day we plan on uh, sanding down and refinishing all of them, but we're not going to do that until we're done tweaking the layout of this house. Uh, we're going to be changing some rooms around, opening up some spaces, and so we don't want to have to refinish the floors twice. But Christian's just going to go around, clean up all the carpet padding, remove staples, tack strips, lots of fun stuff, but uh, these carpets, gone, look so much better. I'm so excited. Even just watching this clip back, it is so, so good. You won't see me, Maddie, or Bucky in this clips because these tack strips are just covered in nails and they're sharp and just dangerous to have little feet running around on. So I was keeping Maddie and I busy and out of the house while Christian tackled this part of the process. On my way to a weekend rumble, I forgot to check where the party was at. Roaming around without any trouble, I began to ask everybody I met, singing, oh. Ignore the curtains in this video. Christian had like MacGyvered some kind of extra extended curtain rod that was not gonna work out for us long term. So I'll show you what we ended up doing later on. But now that the carpets are pulled up, we did mop the floors thoroughly, tried to clean them as best as we could. But uh, moving on, we can finally paint all of the baseboards in here. It's gonna look so nice and clean to have this done. Um, up close, you can definitely tell there used to be like quarter round or like an extra baseboard finish on this. So they're not perfect, but we're getting there. Another trim thing I need to paint were the window trims. Um, these windows are so bad. I've talked about them before. I won't go on too long about them, but all of the windows in this house need to be replaced. So I kind of don't care how they look right now. Like I'm gonna paint the trim and all of that and like replace the color. But when it comes to the bottom windowsill of it, it's actually just a piece of marble or stone or something. And I'm sure you're not supposed to just use interior wall paint on something like that. But for this house, like, we're gonna replace it eventually. I'm just trying to make it look better than it is before, so I'm just gonna put my interior wall paint, the same Swiss coffee color, in an eggshell finish directly over it. I can't attest to it actually holding up or withstanding like long term. We haven't had any chips yet, but I haven't like really put it to the test. But it looks way better than like the red marble that was there before. So that's a nice little bonus we've done to the room also. Now we finally got the right size curtain rods in from IKEA. I love the double curtain rod look. So we have these like sheer light filtering curtains. Um, these are from Ikea, the like sheer ones in the back, and the ones in front are supposedly blackout curtains from Target. They're not super dark and blackout, but I kind of just like the look of them. They're like a linen look. So that's now set up, and Christian's going to switch out our light fixture. Don't know why there was a ceiling fan over the dining room, but uh, it's not staying there. I found on Amazon this really pretty gold light fixture. We're trying to see the exact height that works. After it's installed, it seems a little bit taller than it should be, like it's pretty close to the ceiling, like maybe we should have dropped it a few extra inches, but because our dining table is a smaller dining table, it only seats four people, if we had done it any lower, you would like be hitting your head on the chandelier when you stood up from the table, so if you don't love the placement of this, I don't either, but I can't really do much about it with the current size of our dining table. I feel so useless cause I let you down I hope there's some way I can make it all right Cause I know that you deserve much more than this If you give me one more chance I swear I'll try my best to always be there And I want you to know 
Now onto the last touches, we're moving this chair back into my daughter's nursery. It's her rocking chair. We're also gonna hang up this mirror that we had down in the basement for storage. It's from the old house. It used to hang in our entryway. Let me know down in the comments if you've been hanging around here long enough that you remember our rental house in California from earlier this year. I just don't know what to do if you go. Christian can be a bit of a perfectionist, so while he freaks out over it being level or not, I'm gonna bring this olive tree into the corner. This used to be in our living room, but there's just not space for it right now. And I love it bringing a little bit of color and life into this room. And now the real piece de resistance, like the chef's kiss final touch to this room, is some fresh flowers. I had gone to Trader Joe's earlier this day and uh, been hunting for some things more colorful. I was really hoping to find some really pretty blue, um, what's it called, hydrangeas or something, like big blue blossoms but I couldn't find that so I settled for this uh, I think it's called like sea lavender it's like a pretty purple color it was very very pretty but I'm gonna wipe down the table put the finishing touch of these flowers out there just to bring a smidge more color a bit more life to this space and then I'm gonna go in and do a little secret hack these chairs got busted up a bit during our move you can see the back is scratched and the paint is chipped and I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of a sharpie and just color all of the wood that's now exposed you would be amazed at how well this worked. You like cannot tell at all on these chairs where I have touched them up with a Sharpie. It looks so good. And that is the final look at this space. It's a little bit flat and monotone, but the wood touches the plants in here, bring it to life a little bit. And then when we get around to reviving these wood floors, I'm sure it's going to be perfect in this space. I love the light fixture. I love everything about it. And let me know in the comments what you think. Did I choose the right accent paint color for this? Or would you have gone darker and moodier and bolder? I always love to hear your opinions and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye. I can't show